What's good, y'all? We back with another video. I ain't gonna talk too long because I know what y'all came here for. K Flux Lawyer basically gave an update on a little Rico case. It's only the first couple days this indictment dropped, so there's not too many details out. But K Flux Lawyer decided to give us an update, and that's gonna be played at the end of the video. I ain't gonna talk too long. Shout out Lisa Evans. She works for the news, she's a news reporter, but she's really talking to drill rappers and rappers. And whenever something like this happens, a case is called with a rapper, she does her best to keep the fans updated and interviews anybody that's close to the situation. And she gives a lot of these drill rappers opportunities. And I appreciate her. And shout out K Flux Lawyer for keeping the fans updated as much as possible i appreciate him free k flock back against the wall minor step back for a major comeback everybody count him out stay on that side because when he come home i don't want to hear none of that y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments down below i'm gonna get up to a pretty strong for rocking with me keep doing y'all keep doing me be safe stay dangerous good think of that or could you explain the charges for us well it's a death eligible case it doesn't mean it's actually going to become a death penalty case He's charged with murder in aid of racketeering. He's charged with RICO conspiracy, various gun charges. I mean, it's, it's obviously the most serious case you can have in the federal or even state system in America. But I'm not all that surprised because the case was originally a New York state matter. And it was just the murder that was charged along with uh, the possession of the gun. And the case was incredibly weak. And frankly, um, I didn't think there was any chance that we were going to lose the murder charge because it was clear based on a video that, that was you know, there were videos all over the street. There were cameras, security cameras on when this occurred in the middle of the day. And it couldn't be more clear that this was an act of self-defense. So what I realized, you know, eventually was that they just could not win that murder case. So what did they do? They're going to drop the state case and they're going to just transfer it to the federal system and it allows them to charge all sorts of other violent acts um, as part of their RICO conspiracy charge. And then when they talk about conspiracy, to prove that you're in it, for the government to prove that any individual is in a conspiracy, how high a bar is that or what do they need to do? It's not very high of a bar to um, you know establish some of the elements of the RICO, cons uh, RICO conspiracy, namely that they were conspiring uh, to violate the RICO statute. And it could just be a bunch any number of violent crimes or other acts uh, that were done on behalf of an enterprise um, in furtherance uh, of a RICO conspiracy. Now, that being said, they still have to prove, you know, some of that individual conduct. They can't just throw a bunch of mud at the wall and hope that some of it sticks. What, what I believe is when the jury sees how incredibly weak their main charge is, I think it'll give them pause with regard to the rest of the charges. Now, that being said, I haven't seen any evidence except uh, the evidence uh, pertaining to the murder. So just to be clear, in terms of the in terms of the initial the original state murder case, that case no longer exists. Or how do you explain that? I've been told that they're going to drop it because they're just going to um, take it into the federal case and only have one prosecution. It's not unusual. That happens a lot. But as I said, you know, there was a reason why we never took any plea offer in the state case. It was because I felt that the murder was weak. I was sure they were going to lose. And I was sure they were going to be embarrassed by what I thought was a preposterous prosecution. And the fact that this is now the linchpin of not only the federal case this charge, but also is the charge that triggers a potential death penalty in this case. It's incredible. I mean, what I would say is, the public should look at this video, see that Kevin Perez was clearly trying to uh, just walk down the street, defuse a situation which was an armed gang member who bolted out of a, of a barber shop to confront him. Kevin walked straight away from him, put his hand up to say, I'm not interested. And it was only when the gang member had his hand in his pocket and was about to pull it out that Kevin realized he was going to get murdered. And when the victim hit the ground and they went through his pockets, what did they find? They found a loaded gun with one in the chamber that was meant for Kevin Perez. Now, you know, it's, you know we're, not, we're not fools here in New York City, but if you know that a violent guy, a guy with a rap sheet a mile long with all kinds of violence in it, is about to take out a gun and shoot you, what do you do? You have nowhere to go. There was nowhere for him to go. He was just a handful of feet away from uh, the, the so-called victim. How concerned are you also about the, you know, with the aspect of the music? We've seen high-profile cases like Casanova, 
uh, Takashi 69 with these large indictments with large numbers of people indicted in the same in the same particular case the, the lyrics and their music being used as evidence to portray a picture of criminality how concerned are you about that especially because of the you know just the rawness the street rawness of, of the drill music and of a lot of his lyrics well, I'm concerned that the jury's going to be tricked into thinking that what people write in their lyrics is actually somehow fact. What I would point you to, you mentioned 6 9 and I would say in his lyrics, I don't think he's bragging about becoming a cooperator for the feds. And that's exactly what he became. So clearly what they write in their lyrics and the real world are not necessarily the same thing. 